now let's add in our edit and delete functionality. So the first thing we want to do is for the edit button, let's um, go back up to our blog view. This is where we're going to do those, um, add these event listeners. So after tag name, let's type in, um, well, let's do this after initialize. Let's type in events. So now we're going to have um, a list of events. First thing we're going to listen for is going to be um, when the uh, edit blog button is clicked and you'll see that we had the class um, the class here edit blog so that's what it's going to be listening for so when we click on edit blog we're going to run the function edit and so let's write this edit function right now and this function is going to do these things so when we click the edit button um, we're going to want to do a few things. First, we want to um, we want to hide these two buttons and add two new buttons. And so, uh, let's put these two new buttons right next to these buttons right here. So we're going to add a button that has um, class equals btn btn success. That's going to make it green, and it's going to have the class update blog. We're going to name it update script thing and then we're gonna do the same thing with the delete button so let me um, copy paste this so I don't have to deal with that script thing and let's make this um, BTN let me make it danger this will be our cancel button so let's just name this um, with the class cancel and it's gonna say cancel there we don't want these to show up right away and so we're gonna first have them be hidden and so we're gonna just say um, style equals um, display none and we're going to do the same thing with the cancel button let's copy that paste that there and so if we uh, refresh our browser oh it's because I need a comma there otherwise if there's an error and so now if we add a blog You'll see that the update and the delete buttons or the, the cancel buttons aren't there. Um, so now let's add in the functionality. So when we click on edit, we're going to want to hide these two buttons and we want to make the other two buttons show. So let's uh, do um, edit blog button hide and then uh, delete button delete blog hide and let's do. Um, update blog this probably isn't the most efficient way to do it but it'll work for now show and then cancel cancel that show so now if we go back to our um, blog here or our blog roll um, when we click on edit now the buttons will change to update and cancel and I'm just gonna put a space between them to make it look a bit a little bit nicer um, put a space right there and so now we want to actually do something when um, the edit button is clicked. So let's um, go back here. And what we want to do now is we want to make those values editable when we click on edit. So what we're going to do is we're going to change, we're going to um, store the values of um, the data first. So var author is going to be equal to this dot um, author dot input no this dot author um, so that's going to be the value of the author for this um, table row and we're going to store the value of the HTML so this is just going to be so um, it's going to be J for this line right here I'm going to do the same thing with title I'm just going to copy paste these so um, title and then URL so let's uh, change these to title change these to URL that's just going to store the values and then now what we want to do is we want to change the um, the elements to be input elements that we can edit so um, we're going to do this dot 
author.html. So we're going to change the HTML inside of this cell right here. And we're going to change it to be an input box of type text and class form control. And we're going to change it to be author update class so that we can um, change the value. And we're going to have the value start off with um, the oops, value that uh, we've stored here. So it's going to give a starting value to these input boxes. And then we're going to close this element there. It's kind of confusing there, but um, you can kind of follow along and see how that works. So now when we click on um, edit, it's going to store the value of whatever's here inside of a input box. You see uh, I have a quotation mark there that's unneeded. Oh, I need a quotation mark right there. So let's try that one more time just to make sure that it works properly. Um, okay, so add, now when I click on edit, you'll see a text box with that value right there. We're gonna do the same things with the title and the URL boxes or the cells. So one, two, and we're gonna change author here to um, title. I'm gonna change URL author here to URL. So now if we do the same thing, let's type in AA, BBB, CCC, add, we click on edit now, it'll have these values stored in these input boxes here. And then finally, um, well that's it for the edit button there. Um, next what we want to do is we want to create the um, update functionality. And so let's create a new um, event here that says um, click update log and we're going to run the function update and so let's create this fu update function now when we click on update it's going to run this function here here's what it's going to do so what we're going to do is we want to set the values of the input boxes to be the new values of the blog model and so let's do this dot model dot set author so it's going to set the author attribute of the model to the value of the input box so um, author update value and we're going to do the same thing with the title and the URL so one two let's change these author to title and then author here to URL and then now we want to listen for changes to our um, blogs collection and create a new render function when that happens. So we're going to add in here this dot model dot on change. So everything, every time something changes or something is edited, edited, um, we're going to. We technically want to do this dot render, comma this, but this won't technically work because let me show you what's going to happen if we try that. Um, 64. Oh, we need a comma there. Okay, so let's refresh this. Let me show you what's going to happen if we try to run this code um, as is. So we have these. We're going to click on edit. We're going to change this to um, BBB. I'm just going to add some stuff there. And only the first box is actually going to update. You'll see that um, only this box updated, these two didn't. And that's because um, right when it detected this change, it stopped completely and it didn't register these changes here. So one thing I did to fix this is I made this into a set timeout function so that it'll delay a little bit, just enough time for um, these two values to be registered. And so I'm gonna create a new function here and it's going to be 
So I create a new function here, and inside this function, we're going to write um, set timeout function. And inside the set timeout, we're going to do, um, well, first we need to, again, we can't use this dot render because this won't work inside the set timeout function. So we need to do the same little trick of our self equals this up here. We're going to put self down here, so self dot render. And we're going to wait a little bit before we do that. Let's just make it wait something that's barely perceptible, 30 um, and so let's try out this code now. Let's put the semicolon here. So now I was waiting just long enough to register the, um, the values of those. So we'll just do ABC or just type in random things there. So now let's edit it. And let's just add in um, KKK. Uh, let's do BBB, BBB, BBB. I'm going to click on update. And now you see that the BBBs have been all added in to the end properly. And so now our update button works. And you'll notice that the buttons automatically change back when we click update because when we uh, newly render the page, it's going to set everything back to the defaults. So next, what we want to do is let's um, write the functionality for the cancel button. Um, let's add in a new event. It's going to be click dot delete and we're going to run, or cancel, not delete. And we're going to run the function cancel. And let's write this function now. So underneath update, let's do cancel. It's going to have the function. So then with cancel, all we're going to do is we're just going to uh, refresh the page to reset everything to, to the default. So all we need to do is blogs view.render. Um, that'll just kind of remove the edit um, formatting. And so let's just test that out. A K K L L. Um, now let's click on edit. And then uh, if I just click on cancel, it's going to newly render the page and reset everything back to the defaults. So let's just type in um, YYU. And we can add. So notice that these buttons don't work quite right. When we click on edit, it changes it to update for everything. What we can do to fix that is we can go back to our code and we can just type in um, this dot to the, each of these. And once we do that, th this is, there's still kind of some glitches to this app, but it'll work well enough. And now you see if we add in um, two different um, entries and we click on edit, it's only going to change it for one of them now and it's going to remove it for the other ones. Um, and we can click on cancel, edit, cancel. Okay, so now the last thing we need to do is set up the delete button for our blog roll. So let's go back to our editor and we're going to now listen for a click to the delete button. So we'll put a comma there, we'll say click uh, delete blog and the function that it's going to run is going to be delete here. So now let's scroll down and let's add a delete function here. And so let's call it delete. We're going to write function. And what this is going to do is it's just going to destroy the model that we are on. So we're just going to do this dot model, which is going to refer to uh, this model at the top here, this new uh, blog that it's referring to. And then it's just going to be dot destroy uh, parentheses, and we'll save that. And now what we need to do is we need to have our blogs view uh, listen for the removal of an item in our collection. So we're going to type down here uh, this dot model dot on remove and then we're going to um, re-render the page, so this dot render, um, comma, this. And so now let's save it, and let's test it out in our browser. So let's um, go to our browser, refresh the page, and enter in sample blog here. So Tim's blog, 
HTTP slash slash Tim's blog.com. We'll add it and now we'll press delete and it is deleted. So our blog role is now finished and we can play around with it. So let's try adding some blogs. So let's try it. maybe Emily, Emily's blog, and then we'll try maybe just Emily's blog.com. We'll add this one. We'll add another one. Let's do um, John, John's blog, and then John's blog.com. We'll add this one. And let's try editing um, John's blog now. And it's going to be, let's make it John's uh, great blog. John's blog is great. And then John's blog is great. And let's update that. And that is updated. And we can now delete all of these. And so we are now finished with our blog roll app. And I think that's it for now. We're gonna, that's all we're going to cover for this video. In our next video, we're going to go over how to connect our Backbone app to a server so that we can actually fetch, update, destroy data with a database. And we're going to be using MongoDB for that. So stay tuned for that video. Uh, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. Hope you found this helpful. Make sure to subscribe, leave comments, ask questions, and uh, be sure to stay tuned for the next video. All right. Bye. Bye.